All right, we're back. We have a call of the day winner today. Undoubtedly, it's Salesforce. Again, not selling off significantly, but nonetheless, Brenda, your stock downgraded to underperform at Bernstein. They talk about growth purgatory. Those are the words that they used. The target goes to 119 from 134. That's about 20% lower. What do we make of this call? We think if we look at what the company is doing today, they're focusing more now on trying to improve profitability, which I think is an important part of the story here, and still have a ton of recurring revenue. And that's really valuable in our view. But obviously, there's been management changes that you know, no one's happy about, two pretty significant ones in a row. Uh, the company's business is slowing. And we put these, this company in the camp with a lot of other mega cap tech companies in terms of it just being more mature. And also, you know, coming off of a couple of years that were incredibly strong, and now we're on the other side of that. So we continue to think that Salesforce and its product are going to be incredibly relevant in the marketplace. Companies, we think, will continue to prioritize spending on Salesforce and, and taking care of their customers. And we think the company has a lot of opportunity to cross-sell products within their existing base of customers. But I think the bigger question is, how much do we pay for that mm -hmm. in terms of what the mm -hmm. bull is? Um, it certainly has come down. Um, but we think it does ultimately deserve to trade at a premium uh, because of all the things I just mentioned. Uh, so we're continuing to stick with it here, but obviously it's um, it's it's become a more, much more controversial story. Joe, uh, you made a great trade in this. You owned it and you sold it in April of 2021. So I guess you probably sacrificed some, some upside and protected yourself to a lot of downside yeah, and the by getting out when you did. The strategy sold out of Salesforce because it began to recognize the deterioration in the sales growth. If you go back and you study the last three years, you'll see this company averaging nearly 25% sales growth. The last, car, last quarter, they struggled to eke out 13%. So that revenue growth is so critical in terms of what Brenda's suggesting. What's the right valuation? What's the right premium Which for a 20, this company? It's at 26 times. Part of the issue with the note or the issue they raise is that they sort of masked the drop in what you're talking about in revenue growth through acquisitions, right. which made the picture seem prettier than in reality it are was. They, are, they, are they in a position right now where they can continue with that aggressive acquisition strategy? I would say the answer to that is no. So now it falls back onto margins and you see right away, what are they doing? Reducing the workforce, right? What do you think here? Would you interested in this? Salesforce? No. Why? Um, listen, I know they've come down from trading ridiculous multiples of sales to trading at five times, five, six times sales, I think. Uh, if you were to talk to some of my friends in the industry that are familiar with the name, there's insider selling in this stock. Um, yeah, about five times sales. So it's, it's not something that we would, we would buy. We're not interested in the uh, space. Okay. Uh, I want to hit another downgrade because it goes to you, uh, Jenny. It's CarMax, another sell call today. Uh, downgraded underweight, J.P. Morgan is the, is the firm that does it. Price target goes to 60. That's about 11% downside from here. Unfavorable risk reward. Hope for a recovery, they suggest, looks premature. What do you think? I think it's a laughable timing. I mean, where were they when the stock was at $130? So, so they've already missed 50% downside, and now they're downgrading it with 11% downside from here. But also, this is a really interesting time. I would actually have upgraded it from here, because what you've got ahead is you've got normalizing supply chains. One of the biggest challenges for CarMax over the past couple of years, even though they made a lot of money because of it, was the lack of supply. So now you're going to have tons of supply, if the economy stays kind of weak or tricky, people are going to be more likely to buy used cars versus new cars. You're going to see them return. So they had this like huge boost up in earnings, and that's what, what drove this share price up. But what you see going forward from here after 2023 is that they actually return to this like really consistent previous normalized earnings growth of probably mid to high teens. Also, what's positive is the Carvanas of the world that were coasting along on free money, they're pretty much dead and gone. So you've got returning normal earnings growth, returning volumes, you've got a cheap stock, um, less competition. I don't know why you wouldn't upgrade it. Okay. Can, Coming up real quick. And can I, can I, I give go, you we, that we, said? Give me real private quick. equity on Salesforce, I want to go back just one second. Private equity is now interested in that industry. You've seen it kind of come in mass. There's haves and have nots. And some of my PMs are telling me, listen, some of these at those prices, you got to pay attention to. In fact, one of them saying, he, he does, in fact, like Salesforce and is paying attention to it. So I want to be respectful of my team.